Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The December 5th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is... Um, it's called to order, thank you, at 6.30 p.m. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Cutler Dye. Commissioners, please turn your mics on and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Cutler Dye. At this time, we'll have roll call led by staff liaison Francine Spriegel. Happy holidays. Commissioner Bajan. Here. Commissioner Brousseau. Present. Commissioner Bryman. Here. Commissioner Cutler Dye. Here. Commissioner Letterer. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. Commissioner Leone. Here. Commissioner George McGuigan. Here. Commissioner Jed McGuigan. Here. Commissioner Sote. Here. Commissioner Scully. Here. Commissioner Sclavanitis. Here. Commissioner Stein. Here. Adult Commissioner Nalmandian. Here. And Adult Commissioner Petrus. Here. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce Commissioner Letter for the public comments portion of our meeting. This is a time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns about youth-related issues in our city or to present items for the commission consideration. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? There being none, let's move on. Thank you, Commissioner Letter. And now we will have Commissioner Sote with public with guest speaker. Excuse me. Um, today we have guest speaker Randy Pentis, and he is currently in his 30th year of law enforcement with the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, and has almost 20 has almost has served almost 20 years with the Thousand Oaks Police Department. He has a broad and diverse public safety background and has also worked as a patrol ser sergeant and training sergeant in Thousand Oaks before being promoted to police captain. He is now concluding an assignment as police captain overseeing the Court Services Bureau at the Hall of Justice in Ventura and was just promoted to commander and will begin as Thousand Oaks Police Chief on March 26, 2012, which I guess he already is. Hi. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I am uh, very proud to be here. And we do a lot of community talks. And I, and I talk with uh, many high school students. And we educate parents. And a lot of times what we forget uh, is the focus on our youth and the youth that are making uh, significant choices uh, in their lives. And that's why I'm very proud to be here. I'd like to talk to you about some of the issues that we're facing and how things have changed in our society uh, and what youth, what you are facing, what you're looking at, what challenges that you have. Um, and you heard the introduction, uh, Commander, Chief of Police, and it sounds uh, pretty important. But I can tell you the most important uh, role I've ever had, and, I'll, and I will speak for the parents in the audience, uh, the only thing that's really, really important to me is being a dad. Um, and that's, that's one of the reasons I want to talk to all of you. Let's talk about substance abuse and, and, and what we see today. Um, we have, and it all revolves around for the youth um, and adults as well, but especially for all of you, it revol revolves around choices that we make. And I'm not talking about mistakes. All of us had, have been made mistakes in our lives, young or old. We make a mistake, we learn from our mistake, we get better because of that, we, we grow, and we're better people overall. But with substance abuse, that's not, that's not a mistake. That's a choice. That's a choice that our young people make, our young adults make. Uh, whether it be alcohol, uh, and with marijuana, Obviously, the laws in mar uh, with marijuana have changed drastically over the years with Prop 215 um, in the mid-90s. And we see some of our youth with a medical marijuana card. One of the major problems uh, with it and the abuse is it is in the 70s and 80s, the THC level, the active ingredient in marijuana, uh, was at about 5%, 6%. Now it's at about 22%. It's highly addictive. Why is that so significant? 
because the people that we're seeing your age and older that have abused alcohol, have abused marijuana, have that highly addictive THC level, and they move on to other issues. What am I talking about other issues? Um, would you ever imagine heroin in our community? Well, it's here. How did we get from alcohol and marijuana to heroin in our community? Well, the, the connection from marijuana to prescription drugs. You may not be aware of it, but every police station in the county has a bin where you can take prescription drugs and drop them off. Uh, many people have had surgeries and they leave it, uh, they leave the prescription drugs um, in a medicine cabinet. Well, at many high school parties, people where there's alcohol and marijuana present, they're going into the medicine cabinets. We have residential burglaries where they're going after prescription drugs. Um, the addiction to heroin from some of these painkillers, a very significant painkiller, oxy oxycodone, um, uh, Vicodin, um, other medicines, Soma, you name it, that are being abused. We've seen, we've talked to kids your age that go to a high school party and they have a farm party, pharmaceutical party. Everyone brings different medicines from their house and they put it in a bowl and they combine that with alcohol. We've had over 14 heroin-related deaths in the east end of the county the past couple of years, both in the Canada Valley area and Simi Valley. Many of you uh, are probably aware of a very tragic si situation uh, last year. A boy named uh, Griffin Kramer died from an overdose, a Thousand Oaks High student. It's just, it, it just heartbreaking stories. Um, any age is just too young, and one time is too many. But, but we're seeing that connection between, again, the marijuana and the prescription drugs, and how do we get to heroin? Because of the opiates in the opiate compound in the prescription drugs, people get addicted to it. It's expensive to get the prescription drugs. Heroin is relatively inexpensive. So we have people your age using heroin in our community. So it's, it's very, very dangerous. Um, as I said when I first started speaking about this, I'm approaching this as a law enforcement officer and as a parent. And what do we do about it? How do we combat this? Um, and, and, it, and it starts with you guys. We have a school resource officer on, on each high school campus. It's a layer of protection. But most of, the high, most of the violence that have occurred at high schools, there's been a school resource officer assigned to that school, not always on campus when it's occurred. It's a layer of protection. Who is responsible for making a high school safe? You are. We support it. We've got a great school district in our community. We've got great teachers. There's a lot of involvement from everybody. But who really can make it safe? It's you. Who can, who can keep yourselves off of prescription drugs, alcohol, marijuana, abusing these? You. How do you help somebody? You help your friend. I go back to Griffin Kramer. He played football at Thousand Oaks High School. I'm sure many many people knew that that he had a problem, and th and, and this was this was a young man who had gone through rehabilitation, but it, it's collectively it's all of you. And the other the other dynamic of this is what's changed us um, is technology, iPads, iPhones, the communication tools, the internet. What you are exposed to is much different years ago when when this technology didn't exist. It's great in a lot of ways when you get a homework assignment and you need to do research, it's great. But some of the things that are available to you that you have to make choices not to go down that road is there. And especially when we have young people using a credit card to try to buy prescription drugs, often comes from India or China, you're not even sure what you're buying because, they're, because they want to get that to go to parties. Um, that's another reason why we, we have, if you're not familiar with it, we have a social host uh, initiative in Thousand Oaks. It's all across Ventura County. If someone hosts a party and there's underage drinking, there's a $2,500 civil penalty. Why do we have that? Because of the things that happen at home parties. 
sexual assaults, other violent crimes, the substance abuse with young people, the overdoses that happen. So we want to have, again, that's a, that's a layer of protection as we see it. Another area that I want to talk to you about, uh, especially as young drivers are going to be uh, going to be driving, um, is our is our safety. Um, I was talking to one one young man um, on your board on the commission, uh, and this was recently, just a few weeks ago. Nineteen year old on Westlake Boulevard, doing over ninety miles an hour. I showed him a picture of the speedometer that was 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 stopped at one hundred and thirty one miles an hour. And he had a GoCam camera on his chest and filmed the accident. Um, we can, what's going to make you a safe driver? Education and choices that you make. Um, he had brought up uh, the Every 15 Minutes program that we used to have at the high schools. It's a very expensive program. And a couple of years ago, there was a young man, Cody Marsh, at Newbury Park High School that was killed in an accident. It was the week we had, and I was there, it was the week we had every 15 minutes scheduled at that school. And they had a real life every 15 minutes, every student there. And I addressed the junior and senior class. And there were a lot of tears, flowers. And what I told them, you could hear a pin drop. They, they, they lost somebody that didn't need to lose his life. And my message to them, you all of you know that you shouldn't consume alcohol. All of you know you should never get in a car and consume alcohol. Or with someone who, uh, never getting a car when someone who's driving, who's been consuming alcohol. Those aren't mistakes. You're old enough. You're smart enough. You know what's good and what's not. I understand peer pressure. I understand the decisions, but that's a choice that you're going to make. And. The reason we don't do this every 15 minutes is because it's a one-time event. It's a very, very good program, but we're choosing to have programs throughout the entire year. So we just don't have that one program after a tragic, tragic, tragic incident. We lose a young man that we didn't have to. What happens? What choices do you make a month later, six months later, a year later, when you're in college? That's the impact that we want to have. So we want to have continuous education about the topic with all of you that are making the choices Be because one, one is too many. Do you have any questions about the substance abuse area or uh, the driving? Um, with the discontinuation of every 15 minutes and you talked about continuous reinforcement, what kind of programs are you going to do um, to reinforce? It's a very good question. We want to, we always like to have parents there as well because I like parents to hear with the message that we're giving to their kids. But we want, we want to give you the, give you all the information to develop your decision-making process and what choices are you going to make? So how are we going to do that? Well, at the high schools, um, if anybody is going to play any sports, if there's a mandatory meeting with myself and or Captain Fryhoff or school resource officers, some of our resources from our station talk to all of you, the parents, about substance abuse and, and driving and choices and how the SRO plays a role in that on the high school campuses. He has a, he, he has a Twitter account for communication purposes. He's there every day to answer your questions and we'll have ongoing programs. As an example, uh, this young man who lost his life on Westlake Boulevard, we are taking the the this the filming of the crash um, prior to the crash and when the crash occurs and the camera's still activated and the motorcycle and the car and take the high schools. I don't have to speak. I just have to play that tape. There's another one that we that that we use. It's the dangers of texting and driving. Um, it's the inattention. If you can imagine a football field, closing your eyes and driving a hundred yards, if you think you can do that safely, and that's about what happens. That's the time frame of what it takes to texting. Texting is actually more dangerous than than being on a phone. On the phone, there's inattention. 
and that causes obviously the pro- a problem. But it's uh, even a more of a significant problem when the inattention r- rises to the level of you're not even looking at the roadway. You're staring down at your lap. And we have a we have a video, a 911 call of a young woman going on Arbalis and she's eastbound on Arbalis and she's going to make a right-hand turn going up Westlake Boulevard. And there's um, a mom and her daughter behind her and sees her texting and swerving. And she goes off the road and goes into about a 40-foot ravine. And she's hanging upside down. She went to the hospital, but she wasn't hurt. She was more scared. And I play that tape at another segment, another reminder, when I'm talking about texting and driving and on a cell phone and driving. Instead of me telling you that, you listen to a 17-year-old girl, scared, hanging upside down, high school student. She doesn't know where she is. She thinks she's by Los Cerritos Intermediate School on Herbs and Flores. We can't find her because the car's off the roadway. Fire department, sheriff's department, we're racing around trying to find her. You listen to the dispatcher trying to calm her, calm her down, talk to her, and then we get there, and um, fortunately she's okay. So we take a picture of her texting, and we show that to all of you, and then you listen to the tape. That's the kind of education I think is powerful. Instead of me telling you, hey, don't text and drive, you expect me to tell you that, and I've got reasons to tell you that. Because I'm going to tell you that I've been asked, I get asked by adults, I get asked by young people, um, what's the worst thing you've ever had to do in law enforcement? And a lot of times they think it's a use of force. Um, Have you shot somebody? Um, Have you used your taser? Uh, Something like that. The worst thing I've ever done uh, is knock on someone's door. And and I didn't understand this uh, because I wasn't a parent at the time. But to knock on someone's door and tell them they lost their child. And the first time I did it, I was a young deputy sheriff working patrol in New Bray Park and it was a 16 year old girl that was uh, killed in a car accident uh, alcohol involved I didn't I, I couldn't even realize how the parents felt and I will tell all of you you're all very bright uh, to be on the commission you, you obviously care uh, you care about yourselves you care about your schools it's admirable and as smart as you are there's one thing that you that you don't know and I hope you find out someday in many, many years when you're out of college and, and you're in love and you're married, uh, the first time you hold your child. Because I know you love your mom and dad and your brothers and sisters and friends, but you'll find out what love is once you hold your child. Um, and so that's where we come from on the education part of it with some of these. Because when people ask that question, that's part of our prevention. Because one of those door knocks is too many. One phone call to a parent's too many. You have all of our youth we've got so many great kids that live in this area that have so much to offer we don't want to lose anybody and and i will also tell you that you may think that my opinion's jaded i've been in law enforcement for over 30 years you might think oh he probably doesn't he probably thinks that most people are bad i know most people are good Uh, 98 99 percent of the people that we serve are good people um we fill the prisons with 1% or 2% of the population. But with young people, 99% of all of you are very, very good young men and young women uh, with great minds and great hearts. But such a high percentage of all of our youth are one choice, not mistake, are one choice away from tragedy, are one choice away from doing something nor- normally wouldn't do, whether it's driving, texting and driving, and you make that one mistake. What if that young girl lost her life over that? She's a good kid, good family. Cody Marsh, good boy, good family. All these kids in our community are good kids. Just because they've been making some bad choices doesn't make them bad people. We want to reach out and help them, help them make the right choices. I wish we could have helped a Griffin Kramer. I wish we could have helped some of these boys and girls because it's one's too many. So that's all part of the ongoing education because we, if, it, if we hit you once, once a year, it's always scheduled in your mind, oh, it's every 15 minutes in May. And it's a great program, but I want to do it throughout the school year, during the summer. I said from the start I was very proud to be here, and I and I am. But and that's why. Um, I don't know if that answers your questions, but that's that's the whole that's the whole picture of of how we approach it. Thank you. I understand that the Dare program got discontinued. I believe was is there a reason why? That's a very good question. 
and I was one that um, was a proponent of trans transitioning from DARE to school resource officers. DARE was a very good program. My kids went through DARE. And anytime you have a program that helps kids have a good relationship with law enforcement, educates ki kids about substance abuse, <clears throat> and this was a program that was started in the 70s by Los Angeles Police Department Chief Daryl Gates, and whose son, one of his children, had a, a, a drug problem. And he wanted to do something within his agency to help the youth of Los Angeles. And it went worldwide. And it was a very good program. But what we found was, I mentioned some of the changes in technology. I mentioned some of the, the changes in abuse, the changes in marijuana, the higher THC level, highly addictive. The issues with prescription drugs and heroin. Some of these other things, we saw that quite simply the program wasn't working. We had an increase in substance abuse with the same type of education. So what are we going to do differently? And what age do we have most of the problems? And because it was a very good program, as I said. So we transitioned to put a high school, at each high school, a police officer. Now with that, and we also do, and unfortunately we can't do it as much as we'd like, um, but we do a couple different things. We want to get to kids before uh, they're in high school. So at fourth, fifth, and sixth grade levels, we talk to them a little bit about choices. We talk to them about bullying, having tolerance for people, and then, uh, then age appropriate for middle school, seventh and eighth is what I'm calling middle school, and then again as freshmen as, as they go into high school and they're young men and women. Because a lot of changes happen, as, as all of you know, from elementary school, middle school, and high school. Your body's change, you're maturing, your, your, your brain is maturing, there's a lot of things going on, um, and you're just, quite simply, you're growing up. And we also have a new program now, along with this, is, uh, is Fulcrum. So every fifth grader in the Canary Valley Unified School District is going through this program about leadership, tolerance for others, making choices, and then we'll track it through the seventh grade and the ninth grade. But that's why we went to it because we had to, we had to make a change. Technology changed what everyone has access to, society has changed, and the program really hadn't changed and it wasn't it just wasn't as effective. And that and that's why we transitioned to it. When speaking to the sports teams at schools, how do you address the issue if someone is scared or afraid to come um, because of the consequences they might face um, because if they've been doing drugs or other illegal things? You know, it's a, it's a good question. And we have, when I talk to kids, um, we, we give our cell number, we give our Twitter, and it's not the kind of thing of a tattletale, a snitch line. It's that saving somebody's life. If you have a friend that's making the wrong choices, but you want to be their friend, but you don't, and they're not listening to anybody. Well, um, we get the information through Twitter or, or through through some of their friends, and that fear factor of people not wanting to come forward is not only with with the youth; it's with adults as well. And that's where we have to work with families and young people one on one. We meet the people. If you told me that you had a friend that was fearful of coming forward because they're uh, they're using um, illegal substances, substances um, but they need some help. We have this. We, we have the enforcement arm, but we also have this arm of getting them help. Believe me, we're going to do the enforcement. That's our focus as law enforcement officers is to enforce the law. But if we can help somebody who's making bad choices and get them into rehabilitation, get some family help, there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, sometimes for free, sometimes at not a great cost that we can help families. And that's how we try to overcome it because most of the people that we talk to in the large settings, they're not going to raise their hand. But they come up to us after or we'll get a phone call after. And then we'll meet with them and work out the problem. And we've done that many times. Sometimes we make an arrest. Sometimes they get some help. Or the people that were supplying them with the narcotics, we make an arrest because we want to know that too. But the focus is on making that person a healthy, happy young person getting an education and going to school in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. You guys 
have any questions? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Chief Pentis, and thank you, Commissioner Sote. Item 7 on the agenda is project reports. The Youth Commission undertakes a number of projects during the year. I will introduce the... Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Item, seven on the, under, item 6 on the agenda is school liaison reports, and I would like to introduce uh, Vice Chair Lee. Thank you, Chair Sclavonici. So um, item six is the school liaison reports. So in addition to being an advisory board to city council, the youth commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. So I would like to introduce Commissioner George McGuigan to um, talk about the Thousand Oaks Library Teen Advisory League. Um, I would like to in introduce Leah Chavez to the podium to talk about the total program at the library. I am a sophomore at Westlake High School and I'm a member of Total or the Thousand Oaks Library Teen Advisory League. And I am here to talk briefly about what's been happening at the Thousand Oaks Library. The past month has been a busy one at Thousand Oaks Library with authors, events, and more. Popular author Brandon Mull, writer of the Fable Haven and Beyonders series, spoke to a standing room only crowd on November 8th at the Thousand Oaks Library. Brandon, who graduated from Westlake High School, discussed his family career and introduced his new book, Candy Shop War, Book Two, The Arcade Catastrophe, at this free program. <coughs> it was a great night, and Brandon stayed two hours after the program to sign books and talk with fans. Over the Thanksgiving weekend, hundreds visited Grant R. Brimhall Library to see NASA lunar samples and a regolith exhibit. Andrea Diamond, a NASA JPL certified educator, explained these NASA sanctioned samples from the moon that were a part of the exhibit. Participants were able to participate in some hands-on science experiments and also contributed to cosmic canvas art, which is now on display at the Children's Library. This free program was part of the Thousand Oak Library's ongoing 30th anniversary celebration. This coming Sunday, December 9th at 2 p.m., the library will host professional photographer and author Richard Salas as he introduces his new book, Blue Visions. This incredible collection highlights the author's experiences photographing the undersea world from Mexico to the equator. It has been estimated that one in five people are dyslexic. Award-winning documentary director James Redford, son of Robert Redford, will shed light on this issue with the screening of his new film, The Big Picture, Rethinking Dyslexia, on Saturday, December 15th, 1 to 3.30 p.m. at the library. He will also discuss his family's experience with dyslexia and the making of the film. Audience Q&As will be answered by Redford and a panel of experts from the International Dyslexia Association, L.A. Chapter. This free, this free program is open to the public. On Sunday, December 16th, from 2 to 3 p.m., Grant R. Brimhall Library will host a Festival of Lessons and Carols. This multi-sensory Christmas celebration features soloists and musicians from California Lutheran University. And for those teens in need of some lighthearted fun during the winter break, bring your whole family and come and enjoy some winter break family films with the screening of Brave on Wednesday, January 2nd, 2013, and The Lorex on Thursday, January 3rd, 2013. Both of these films will begin at 1 p.m. in the Grant R. Brimhall Library Community Meeting Room. Need help with your homework, a term paper, other assignment, or upcoming test? Take advantage of the powerful research tools available at your library. Check the library website, toaks.org slash library, for additional details about these powerful research tools, the programs I mentioned, and don't forget to like the Thousand Oaks Library Facebook page to receive future notifications about library programs and events. Thank you for letting me come and present some brief information about what is happening at the Thousand Oaks Library. We hope you will all check it out. Thank you, Leah. I'd like to turn the meeting back to Vice Chair Lee. Thank you. I would also like, or I would now like to introduce Commissioner Boyajian, who will talk about the Associated Student Government portion of our meeting. Hello, everyone. So the Youth Commission invites representatives from each of our local high schools and middle schools to present information about school activities for the purpose of generating a feeling of community spirit. So first off, we have Jonathan and Colton from Los Cerritos Middle School. Could you guys please go up to the podium now? Thank you.
Hi, I'm Jonathan Bryman. Hi, I'm Colton Bourne. And Los Rios students have been busy. Our leadership classes have organized our annual Toys for Tots holiday drive. We had a really fun lunchtime activity with musical chairs last week. Our rally in November was a great success. We had two fun games and had a school-wide music video that everybody enjoyed. We had a powerful assembly at the end of Red Ribbon Week that illustrated how we can all be part of the solution to stop bullying. To reinforce this idea, groups of peer service and support team students presented the anti-bullying message to many classes. The students who participated signed a pledge to make our school a fun and safe place to be. Our Builders Club is currently organizing a lunchtime activity that invites students to write letters to Santa. For each letter written, Macy's will donate a $1 donation to make a wish foundation. We are really looking forward to this coming Friday when the Westlake High School Choir will visit Los Cerritos and perform their musical talents. It is always fun when they invite our Los Cerritos students to participate. We are also looking forward to our annual winter dance next week on December 14th, which is also Pajama Day. The Carl's Jr. truck will provide dinner for us and a huge inflatable will be there. Our leadership classes are looking forward to our upcoming leadership training day with Fulcum Training where we will learn to facilitate team building activities and work together as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys, and next off we have Paige from Sequoia Middle School. Hi, I'm Paige Creason and I'm representing Sequoia Middle School. Starting off the update on Sequoia Middle School, some past recent events that we had is in October we had our annual school carnival. This school carnival was the best turnout we have ever had. Students from all ages came and enjoyed the activities that we offered at the carnival. Kids from all over the area and all over schools came to, to come to many activities, including the rock wall, teacher booths, giant slides, jousting, a, a green screen, a dunk tank, and carnival rides, and more. We also had a huge haunted house put on by ASB and many other teachers that put in their hard work and dedication. This haunted house was a big crowd pleaser, and many students enjoyed, enjoyed this haunted house. It was built very well and we had a great turnout. This past November, we, uh, we also had the annual turkey toss. Every year, Sequoia puts on this annual turkey toss, inviting kids to come down and compete for Cody. We organized the days of the week for each, for each grade and the finals were on Friday. The students were very competitive and enjoyed coming and competing for their homeroom class to get first place this trimester. Some current events that we have at Sequoia Middle School are Toys for Tots. You can donate a book or a toy unwrapped at Sequoia, and this, this event is going through December 10th. We want to, benefit, the, we want to ben, benefit foster kids in our community. We are also, in, we are also partnering with New, Newberry Park High School and Make-A-Wish Foundation happening. This Friday, come on out to Sequoia's talent show. Many kids are, are participating in this talent show, and you guys can come watch in the auditorium. A couple of dress-up days we have currently this in December is Pajama Day on December 21st. We also have Winter Hat Day December 14th. We're continuing to think of and put on new events at Sequoia Middle School and raising the school spirit as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have Grace and Grace from Kalina Middle School. Hi, my name is Grace Mazio. And I am Grace Rattel Hakem, and we are both students in ASB from Kalina Middle School. We have been doing a lot of things at Kalina, including a movie night for each grade level. Eighth graders will sit under the stars and watch a movie that they get to choose. It's, it is on December 17th at night. Also recently, we had Nick Voyacich at Kalina, who spoke to the entire school about treating others fairly and not to bully others. Nick was born without any limbs with no explanation and inspired a lot of students at Kalina to appreciate what they have and to not make fun of people who are different. Kalina is also planning to have anti-bullying bracelets to support Nick's message. Kalina was featured in the Acorn for an anti-bullying campaign. Kalina's debate team recently competed in a tournament held at Kalina. We did very well placing 7th, 6th, and 5th places out of, our nine, out of 96 competitors. Thank you.
Thank you. And now we have Ulysses from Westlake High School. Good evening. My name is Ulysses Glevenies, and I'm a freshman at Westlake High School. I'd like to first start off by thanking, every, by thanking the wonderful theater and choral groups for their performances in November. This month, we have many exciting events going on. First off, we are currently having a Toys for Tots Toys for Tots drive, so bring in any lightly used or new toys you have. December 12th is the blood drive. Sign-ups are in the wigwam at lunch December 3rd through the 7th. Westlake is currently looking for students joining Drumline, so if you're, inter so if you're interested, be sure to sign up. Do you want to help families have a Christmas meal this, ye this year? Then bring a non-perishable food to your 5th period class for December 10th to the 14th. There will be a mandatory meeting on Thursday, December 6th at 3 p.m. at, 3 PM at the golf at the Westlake Golf Course for any boys wishing to try out for the golf team. On Thursday, December 13th, will be a financial aid workshop in the library for seniors at 6 p.m. Come and get prepared for your college enrollment. December 30th, 20th is the pajama day, and the 21st is holiday dress up. So be sure to wear something festive. On behalf of Westlake High School, I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday break, which is from December 21st to January 7th. Thank you. Happy holidays. And lastly, we have Katie from Newberry Park High School. Hello, I'm Katie Owens. I'm a sophomore at Newberry Park High School. And just a recap of recent events we've had, the second annual TEDx conference was held at the Newberry Park High School um, Auditorium PAC, as we like to call it, Performing Arts Center. And this was a great way for students from all schools to get together, speak about the ideas they have, and motivate and inspire all of us. And right now, Penny Wars has started. It's a class competition where pennies are worth one point, all silver coins are worth minus one, and dollars are worth minus five. We'll see who uh, ends up with the most points at the end. This Friday is Flannel Friday, so wear your favorite flannel. And also this Friday, we have a fun Friday activity called What Would You Do for a Klondike Bar? Pretty simple. What would you do for a Klondike Bar? And holidays are here, so it's time to reach out and help those in need. So Newberry Park is asking students to bring gifts all the way into the office, all the way through December 22nd. Those gifts were, are each worth 500 school sense points, as well as at the end they will be donated to Children's Services Auxiliary of Ventura County, a nonprofit organization that helps children in foster care program. Um, and our goal is to get as many gifts as possible, so please bring those in by December 22nd. And also help homeless animals this holiday season. Bring in any animal supplies, such as blankets, food, and toys to the box in the front office. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all of those who came out tonight. And now back to Vice Chair Lee. Thank you, Commissioner Boyajan. Will Commissioner Jed McGuigan please introduce the Teen Advisory Council, the Teen Center Advisory Council portion of our meeting? Hi. Um, so I'm going to be representing the Teen Center Advisory Committee and giving you a recap of what uh, programs have uh, occurred since our last meeting and also upcoming events. So on a, on November 1st, Teen Center staff played with uh, played alongside the Canaveral Valley High School faculty in a high energy softball game against the Canaveral Valley High School students. The students won. Um, on November 7th, uh, 120 sixth grade uh, sixth graders from the area, uh, from the local public school, uh, public middle schools, were treated to a day, day of basketball and delicious barbecue at the teen center. Uh, also, certain middle schoolers were uh, selected to participate in an anti-bullying workshop on November 16th. The 27 participants, uh, participants enjoyed interactive com com uh, components and learning techniques to prevent bullying. On November 17th, the Teen Center held its Harvest Dance for 7th and 8th graders. We had had 525 participants. Our high school Battle of the Bands was held last Saturday. We had five local bands with great talent, and, um, and it was a, they loved to participate in this competition. We had also uh, some professional judges and some great prizes. Uh, we even had Kayla Navarez from The Voice as a judge. Uh, coming up soon, we have 7th and 8th grade uh, holiday dance on Saturday, December 15th from 7 till 10. 
and the 7th, 8th, 7th and 8th grade New Year's Eve celebration on Monday, December 31st from 8 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. Uh, winter registration currently taking place for residents um, is, you know, uh, going to be exciting uh, because we have a lot of skill building classes in uh, art, sports, and workshops, um, and music. Uh, so we also have some winter excursions uh, where we take a bus down to tons of different places, which is a lot of fun. Um, and so if you have any questions or would like to sign up for any of the programs in, uh, coming up, uh, you can contact us at, you can call us at 805-494-5156. That's 805-494-5156. Or visit us um, at on, on our website at www.thousandoaksteencenter.com. Or you can check out our Facebook page. Um, yeah, so thanks. Thank you, Commissioner McGuigan. Again, the Youth Commission would like to thank all of the students who came out and gave reports for their schools. We really encourage all ASB, ASG representatives to come and give reports. So thank you, Commissioners, and I would like to turn the meeting over to Chair Scavenichis. Thank you, Vice Chair Lee. Now item seven on the agenda is project reports. So the Youth Commissioner takes a number of projects during the year. I will introduce the following commissioners who will oversee the coordination of these projects and ask them to present summaries and provide any updates. So first of all, I have Commissioner Jed McWigan with the Youth Implementation Team Update Report. All right, uh, so hi again. Uh, I'm this year's co-chair of the Implementation uh, Committee, uh, along with Jacqueline, Commissioner Lee. Uh, so we're just going to have everyone give a brief recap of what happened at the last meeting. So uh, I'm going to call on uh, each committee. Uh, so we'll start off with recreation with Commissioner Bryman. The recreation committee has decided to host a movie night at the teen center. We are planning on having it on a Friday night in February and are hoping this will be a free event with a small donation to charity at the door. We are hoping that we will have pizza, popcorn, cotton candy, and other treats and snacks, all hopefully free. This event will be for high schoolers only. Thank you, Commissioner Bryman. All right, so now we have uh, the Resource Center Committee with Chair Scovenites. Thank you, Commissioner McGuigan. Uh, so for the Resource Center Committee, on December 1st, last Saturday, we had our first training session uh, with all of the members of the Resource Center who will be working there and overseeing specific days. And we are currently planning uh, to have workshops to introduce the program that we'll be working on for the database online and get to know the software we, are, we will be using. Um, and we're just getting ready for our grand opening in February. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Scovenites. And now can we have the Empowerment Committee with Commissioner Leone? Hi. So um, our Empowerment Committee has been working with Melinda, our um, founder of Girls in Power organization. And this organization helps kids who are either underprivileged or don't get the support they need at home. And it helps them with self-empowerment as well as um, kind of goal setting and to support to provide a support for them. So our um, club has been, um, has taken on the initiative this year to spread um, awareness for her new organization to schools and try to establish clubs on campus. So our, our first club was established at Sycamore Middle School and they've had a few meetings already which Melinda attends. So we're really excited about that and we're trying to get it um, going at a few other middle schools too. So we've designed our constitution and um, we've been working with the girls in their workshop meeting which um, they'll be graduating on the 12th of December. So um, we're gonna go and support them. And that's basically it, so we're having fun. Thank you, Commissioner Leone. So now can we have the uh, Drugs and Alcohol Committee with Commissioner McGuigan, George McGuigan. Uh, thank you. Um, all right, so at our last meeting, um, we had one of our uh, adult liaisons bring up a organization called Engage. And uh, since then, we've contacted them, and we're trying to get a program called uh, uh, Stand Up uh, into the Caneo Valley School District. And what it is is they come in and they, uh, they borrow a house from one of the local residents, and they create an improv party. And then they invite parents from the local school districts to come and view uh, just what goes on at these parties and give them an idea of like uh, uh, drugs and alcohol abuse that goes on at the par uh, parties. So then uh, once we've convinced the parents, hopefully we'll see a positive impact in those kids as well. So that's what we're doing right now. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner George McGuigan. Uh, so finally, we can have the Environmental Committee with Commissioner Sauté. Last meeting, um, our former plans to have a mascot recycling competition and a recycling Facebook page got slightly delayed. So now we're we were just kind of focusing focusing on getting the word of recycling out, and we were trying to get all the schools to make a video for their um, TV programs and just like make a little recycling video and also trying to get articles in their newspapers about it and that's it all right thank you so our next meeting will be on december 12th and there will actually be a change up so uh empowerment will be meeting in the room that we always meet in the community room but all other committees will be meeting in the technical training room which is at instead of at the back entrance it's at the or the main back entrance. It's at the front entrance near the children's library. So if you just go in, take a right, go down the hall, you'll find it to your right. Um, so if if you're not in a commission now, or committee now, you're still welcome to come. We still need more people, especially for the Drugs and Alcohol, alcohol Committee, which is a great committee. They're doing a lot of great work, but we're really lacking support in that field. So uh, we also, any other, if you have any other interests, that's fine as well. Uh, December 12th, Again, that's the date of the meeting. Um, yep, uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. So, yeah, we'd love to see you there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner McWigan. Now we will have the Therapeutic Dance Subcommittee updates with Commissioner Stein. Hello, everyone. I am the chair of the Therapeutic Dance this year, and as we discussed last meeting, the theme is Welcome to the Jungle. It's going to be a jungle theme. Um, we are currently working on decorations, uh, ordering decorations from Command Performance, getting in uh, photo frames, etc., getting ready for the dance. Um, if you would like to volunteer at our work party, our work party is in February. Um, you can... What? February 23rd. Thank you. Um, the actual dance is March 9th of 2013. If you would like to sign up, you can contact the Teen Center at with a phone number 805-494-5156. If you, you want... Or you can contact Francine Spriegel. You can find... At 381 you can also find more information about it on toaks.org slash youth commission. Um, volunteers are always welcome. Please contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stein. Now as we come to the close of our meeting, I would like to introduce Vice Chair Lee to introduce item 8, Commissioner Comments. So this is the last portion of our meeting where any commissioner can make a comment or um, an announcement where n and no action by the commission will be taken. So would any commissioners like to make any comments? Commissioner Brousseau. Um, first of all, I'd like to remind everyone that the Youth Commission has a Facebook page. So if you have a Facebook, go on, search for Thousand Oaks Youth Commission and like our Facebook page for updates about events, volunteer opportunities, and all of that good stuff. And um, I'd also just like to um, take a moment to again thank our police chief for coming out and speaking and to really take to heart what uh, what we learned about tonight so Commissioner Boyajin yeah I'd just like to say real fast that um, Thousand Oaks High School's dance team has their first competition this Saturday in Anaheim and they've been practicing really hard so if you're watching and you're from Tio woohoo to them and send them send them your luck Commissioner uh, Chair Sklavenegis. Thank you. Um, I would also like to encourage all of us to bring in toys for Toys for Tots. It's going on at most middle schools and high schools, especially because we are so privileged and other kids do not have as much. So um, please donate. And also, I would like to congratulate all the sports teams from the winter season that have completed uh, their competitions, especially to Westlake High School's uh, boys cross-country team who won. So we're very proud of them. And congratulations to every sports player in general. Thank you. All right. So I would like to turn the meeting over to Chair Sklavenides. Thank you, Vice Chair Lee, and thank you to every ASB, ASG member, and the total um, members who came and spoke to us and to Chief Pentis again. Um, 
I now, oh, okay, sorry. Um, the, if you have any more information, please visit us at www.toaks.org slash youth commission and visit our Facebook page. And for now, the December 5th, 2012 meeting has been adjourned at 7.20 p.m. Thank you.